Glory to Jesus Christ. Hey everybody, I'm Nathan Nobile, or Nate Nobile. And uh, today I would like to discuss, or uh, read an excerpt from, uh, discuss the topic of creationism and evolution. Through, and read an excerpt from this book, Creation Rediscovered, which is a very controversial book about, it's a creationist uh, Catholic book about the evolution and importance of the origins debate. And now there's been recent debates about uh, evolution and creation in Catholic circles. I like to weigh, on it a weigh, weigh in on it a little bit. I think that there's a lot of problems with the theory of evolution from a Catholic perspective, especially from a metaphysical realist perspective. I don't think you can hold that there are intelligent, um, not intelligent, um, that reality is as it is in the Christian story while holding evolution, um, for, especially if you're a Neoplatonist or even in some ways an Aristotelian. I think that um, there's a lot of the Thomas, the, the people like the Thomistic Institute, they do great work. I'm not calling them out or anything, but some, some of my fellow, I'm a neoconservative or conservative Catholic. I'm not really a trad, but I am a creationist. And I think that creationism makes more sense with the Catholic story. And I think there is enough scientific and philosophical evidence to prove creationism is true. And I, I, I'm sorry to come out as a creationist, I don't think evolution, theistic evolution is a heresy. I just think it's philosophically and theologically problematic. And I think that leads to, it's just an over, it's a pastoral theist. My fellow conservative, neoconservative Catholics who are evolutionists, I think have an overly, are too pastoral towards modern science, especially towards Darwinianism. Neo-Darwinism, Darwinianism has a lot of problems with it, a lot of philosophical problems with it, and um, basically denies metaphysical realism, and I don't think you can do that. You can't do that as a Catholic. You shouldn't do that as a Catholic. And I'm just gonna read from you an, expert, an excerpt from um, Jerry, Gerard Keane's book, which is just a, an underappreciated work of science and the philosophy um it's a scientific work um but it delves into it delves into the whole issue in great detail but um i'm just gonna read from you the a brief excerpt about the nature of empirical science and uh well, I'm going to read from you one about, uh, yeah, the nature of empirical science and how creationism, even though it's a much maligned position, a very unpopular position in modern science, it's seen as religious fanaticism and all this nonsense. All this, yeah. And um, it's not religious fanaticism. It can be proved through science, I believe. It's not something that can, it just relies on religion. I think it can be proved through science. So here's a reading from Creation and Discovered. Empirical science can, by deduction, shed light on the existence of an intelligent force at work in the universe. That's a big one. The existence of coded information pressed upon matter provides a clue to the presence of an intelligent designer. For example, the fantastic complexity and orderliness of the DNA code condensed into a fairly tiny size suggests the tiny size suggests the works of the brilliant of a brilliant intellect rather than a random chance processes the sheer density of information suggests that powerful powerful thought has gone to their design just as human beings just sophist, beings use sophisticated technology to, con, to design and con, construct jumbo jets space craft and other intricate equipment. No one believes for a moment that the wonders of the computer technology are the result of random chance processes. But rather such wonders are clearly a design of extremely intelligent human designers. He's basically talking about how um, 
our creation is acknowledged is is he's talking about the rational basis for intelligent design i'll skip ahead a little bit um it is a sound practice for scientists to recognize the validity validity of our scientific discipline a scientific disciplines and so the argument from design can be dismissed as irrelevant or invalid belief in an unseen creator is not a leap blind leap of faith for this is my note of it's just like kierkegaard or someone like that or protestants but rather faith based on reason however an important question must be asked: what would they design does theology once hail as the queen of the sciences they claim to being scientific and i'll leave you with that question i think that this debate needs to be the creationists need to be taken more seriously because I just feel like we're too quick to accept this relatively new theory in the history of mankind's evolutionism. I mean, Neoplatonism has been around far longer than evolutionism, and so is Aristotelianism. I think we should rely on those sorts of theories. Um, yes, we have made advances in modern science, but I don't see how they're also, they're on the other side, they're also modern scientists who hold to creationism. Like, I believe there's a man named Wolfgang Smith and Jared Keen and others. And the work of the Byzantine Scotus, he, and his YouTube channel, he talks about all the creationist scientists. And I think we need to take this seriously on a philosophical level. Thanks.